business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash android. Video bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for the Weekly Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1366, recorded May 26th, 2012. The Weekly Daily Gizwiz is brought to you by Netflix.com. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, visit Netflix.com. Dot com slash twit. And now, get ready for Dick. It's a brand new week and a brand new day and a brand new daily gizwiz. It's a brand new week and a brand new day and a brand new daily gizwiz. The worse your life, a brand new week and a brand new day, and a brand new day the better we sound. It makes its own gravy. The worse your life, a brand new day. The better we sound, the worse your life, the better we sound. Sound, 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 sound. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a brand new daily, weekly, daily Gizwiz starring Dick D and our special guests in studio, Bob and Jack. You came all the way from Chicago. And Dick, they brought you mints. Here, would you like one? Oh, oh, wow! Thank you. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. You know, earlier these are so good. The other uh, earlier, I was uh, doing something with my left hand, and my right hand, without my knowledge, snuck a mint and popped into my mouth. It's just wow. shocking. It's shocking. It actually, <laughs> yeah, it teaches your limbs to act independently. These are so good. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, last time I was out there, you were talking, uh, holding the mic with one hand and taking my wallet with the other. It's, so yeah, it's a, sometimes yeah. That, the, my, uh, you know, the left hand, isn't it in the Bible that the left hand shouldn't know what the hell the right hand's doing? Yeah. I don't think uh, it's I crazy. I think you're, you're, you're more religious than you realize. <laughs> <laughs> they also brought me Chicago's finest from Frango. This is the same company that makes the mints. Mint chocolate coffee. Oh, now that now, do you do do you do good. flavored coffee or is that very You know what? I do a little bit of flavored coffee because it sort of defeats the purpose of coffee. Coffee Isn't has that, a flavor. It's coffee. Yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah. I, I was kind of surprised. I went to uh, it must be two months now. I went to Coffee Fest at the Javits oh. Center. Oh, and it was you never like told 90- me there was such a thing. Leo, it was about 210 ways to ruin coffee. It was flavorings and, yeah. and frostings, yeah. Yeah. And, and it was kind of amazing. Coffee is delicious. Is Coff- anybody making just coffee here? Yeah, I mean, you know, coffee's so good they actually make an ice cream-flavored coffee. A coffee-flavored yeah, yeah, ice that, cream, right? Uh, yeah. now, you but- know, it's like, like Starbucks in the summer. They go in for their... Uh, peppermint stick, corduroy, <laughs> banana split, frambe, boule, latte. I have to say, I look forward to Christmas every year because I always love peppermint and chocolate. Mint and chocolate go together, and that's why these yeah. mints are so good. I can't wait to try the mint chocolate. And then, but okay, so that was a good start, Bob and Jackie. You know, and they're old friends. They've they they just uh, they're wonderful people, and it's great to see them again. And then Rich came by, and another old friend who has the best job in the world. You know what Rich does? He's a chocolate no. salesman. Oh. Fred, I'm sorry. I call him rich because he's, he's rich in, well, in that's chocolate. Well, your last chocolate sample, <laughs> I would say. For... <laughs> I've been calling him rich all day. Fred, thank you, Fred. Yes. Fred's from Richmond. That's why I'm confused. Oh, I thought oh, it was okay. Rich from Fredmond. And that, that was, it's not. He's Fred from Richmond. No, Rich anyway, from Fredmond, is th- he's visiting here. <laughs> he's, yeah. But isn't that a good job? I sell chocolate for a living. And no, he, a- a- ask him. Does, is he tired of chocolate? Do you get sick of it? I have nothing to do with consumption. He, he, just he's a diabetic. He can't eat it. <laughs> he, now, there was a boss that was clever. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna, yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's the perfect chocolate salesman. He can't eat. Well, he's, pu- he's a pusher man. 
That's what he is because he's brought chocolate dolls. But this is an interesting chocolate, uh, Dick, because it's uh, it's actually a high tech chocolate. It's called Cho T C H O. Does that stand for anything, Fred? Technology chocolate. Technology uh, And the reason is that the president and CEO of this company is the guy, the the couple who started Wired magazine, Louis oh. Rosetto, and uh, is it uh, uh, Jane? Jane. Uh, Tim, Tim, yeah. And Timothy Childs. So what's interesting, these are all technologists, and they said they were kind of sick of uh, doing tech startups, so they did a chocolate startup instead. Oh. So it's like chocolate with real chips in it. <laughs> <laughs> when they say chocolate chips, I mean, but now here's what's fun about this. This one is their special. I'm putting this next to my vitamins on the shelf. This is their 30 Cho a day, their dark chocolate supplement. So you put this on the shelf, and you get one a day. It, they call it the last good drug. And uh, it also says this cap is not childproof. Children are encouraged to open this container. So, uh, so like it has, it, it, there's a vitamin. Uh, no, cloth? there's no vitamins. There's just chocolate. Oh, okay. okay. But but if you think about it, chocolate is good for one's spiritual growth. Oh, I uh, absolutely. I sometimes can absolutely. confuse the size of my stomach with my spiritual growth. <laughs> Uh, it's good for something, anyway. No, but this is nice. Right. So I want to put this next to the vitamins, yeah. and every day I get one piece of delicious dark chocolate. Actually, there, it is good for you. Uh, chocolate has some great stuff in here. It's got uh, all sorts of, you know, it's got uh, uh, antioxidants, mood elevators. It contains uh, phenylethylamine, which is good for uh, euphoria. Well, you can never get enough of that. No, the flavanols are great for your cells. Serotonin elevates your mood. The theobromine is good for your focus. And also yeah, in here, is there any chocolate in no, there? No, there's no room for the chocolate. It's all, anyway, it's very good for you. So I'm going to eat lots more of One that. a day, pal. One <laughs> a day. Yeah. Thank you, Fred, for bringing that. Thank you uh, uh, for bringing the uh, the mints and the, and, the, and the chocolate and everything. I'm just, I'm really, uh, Bob, uh, Bob brought, and Jackie brought that by, and I'm really happy now. I mean, in, I'm actually in a coma. <laughs> but I feel fine. So, Dick, how was your? That's how my week's been. How's your week been? Uh, week is good. You know, it's uh, Memorial Day weekend, and um, Does that, is there a parade in New York? No, the- but you know, there are a lot of ships in the harbor. Uh, you know, did you happen to see the picture I posted on Facebook? Um, um, you know, of if, the one if, if you go to yeah, if you just go to gizwiz.biz and and, and click on Dick's. A log and blog. I went down to see, you know, 10 tall ships came in. Oh, I love tall ships. I love them. Oh, look at this. And they came in at 8 o'clock. And I thought it was 8 o'clock at night, but it was 8 o'clock in the morning. So I obviously didn't see them. (laughs) (laughs) So I I went down at night to see them. I didn't realize that they light every mast on the ship. They look beautiful. Beautiful. But, but Leo... Listen to this. You you can see I didn't bring a camera, so all I had was my my uh, cell phone uh, camera, my Droid Four, and you can see how far away I am. I stop my boat. I take that one picture, and the Coast Guard descends on me. Evacuate the area. What? Yeah, they th- the security in the. <laughs> Hubber has finished off the rest of boating in Lower Manhattan. Oh. I happen to know the rule, or the rule used to be, you cannot get within nine hundred yards, or nine, nine. I think it's nine hundred feet, three hundred yards of a ship or a dock. I am obviously from that photo. It looks like you're about a mile a half away. A mile yeah. away, and yet I, I think it is that there were like four patrol boats in the neighborhood and i was the only pleasure boat on the river so they figured well if we don't chase him away we'll have wasted our time you know so, I, yes, I actually think that the terrorists won that they they've it, they've made us so afraid you know in a way because it's obvious that first of all i have a registered boat my uh, oh wait a second unless uh, you have a bazooka is, aboard i don't think yeah, you're a threat yeah, i have a registered boat with my numbers right on the side in plain view it was really ridiculous so anyway this that's is exactly the point of terrorism and that's why they yeah. call it terrorism people get scared uh, to do stuff and then yeah. and you can't and you can't and life is over you know yeah uh, uh dennis bad, handed but, me a note and, yes. and you know about this place uh there is a ceremony and a small parade at the soldiers and sailors monument yes 
And, sure. And you know that's the beautiful little uh, edifice up on uh, 89th Street right. and Riverside Drive. And this yeah, is the tall ship. This is the tall yeah. ships. It's Fleet Week in New York City, so the, uh, yes, the the fleet comes in. They may have been more worried about the naval vessels than the tall ships. I would guess. I would make, think they'd make a better yeah. target. Look, here's a Japanese naval vessel. That's interesting. That's I wonder the, how close you can get to that. Yeah, it's the uh, the Japanese Navy ship, the JS Shirane, sailing in for fleet. Oh, wait week. a minute, Leah. I'm looking out my window, and there's a guy in a Coast Guard uniform telling me, get away oh. from your window. <laughs> Go away. You, it's Don't too, look no at, looking. Only official no photographers looking. allowed. <laughs> Holy cow. I do love tall ships. And there's oh, the, they're, uh, great. they're great. There's the uh, Blue Angels uh, flying yes. uh, flying over. They're quite something to see. They've asked me uh, three times now to go for a ride in the uh, Blue Angels. And I have You know what? And I've you turn them down? I keep, I keep declining them. They oh, want to make me on. throw who, up so who bad. Ate, who ate fire? I'll oh, eat fire, but I will not go fly in a... You know, well, okay. Now, and uh, my, my, my partner, Patrick Norton, did it. Yeah, he went up in the... In fact, somewhere, if I can find it, there's a video of him. Um, let me see if I can find it on here. Patrick Norton, Blue Angels. Because we, we sent a, a, a camera crew along with Patrick flying with the Blue Angels. Here's the video. So you... Here's the yes, video dog, you. from the you screensavers. You got to fly. Yes, I did. Well, you had the chance. Twice I've turned down the Blue Angels. Twice. And after seeing the next tape, <laughs> I am so happy. Uh, what, is, what did you do? They call it the, the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I am not going to argue. I got to fly in an F-18 with the Blue Angels. It's the U.S. Navy's Flight Demonstration Squadron. They do hundreds of shows every year for air shows all around the country. Is there tech? Is there technology behind this? I don't care. I double-timed it down to the Naval <laughs> Airfield in El Centro, California, to catch my flight. Let's see what happens. So they put a camera in the back of the Blue Angels, these beautiful F-18 trainers. We're here at the Naval Airfield in El Centro, California. That's the winter home of the Blue Angels. Most recruiters, they show up with a folding table, maybe a little banner to go on the front, a slick suit and a bad tie. United States Navy, they show up with the Blue Angels and a stack of F-18s. <laughs> I'm lucky enough to get a chance to fly in one of the Blue Angels jets. But first, a little briefing. My name's Sean Connolly. I've been in the Navy for just under six years. Your pilot today is going to be Lieutenant Craig Olson. You got three ground rules. Number one, don't touch anything, okay? Yeah. Um, lots of things in there that hurt you. Uh, number two is don't take anything in there except what I give you. Number three is have fun. Tell people it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Sit down in there, kick your feet out in front of you as far as you can go. Go ahead and feel the rudder pedals. Directly in front of you is a number pad, like off your telephone keypad. Uh, that's our upfront control. So the radios between So the, the pilot is, uh, is on the left-hand uh, side. And in have the heads front, up and then you're kind of sitting, I think there. you're sitting in the Last back, in the, front there, you're the back seat. The back. A couple things you might want to pay attention to is airspeed. Okay. <laughs> and altitude. And altitude. <laughs> uh, the primary thing that I like to point out, though, is your G monitor down here. Some of the effects on your body are going to feel some Patrick you never doesn't felt. look too nervous. Uh, best thing I can he should have been. I'm just going to say that. that. that Maybe he should have been. <laughs> so they put a. Uh, they're showing him how to how to clench. By the way, yeah, it's very important because uh, during you take so many G's in here, the blood will all fly from your head into your toes, and if you don't clench during those moments, you'll actually pass out. So Patrick, practice. You know, clenching his muscles to hold the blood in your brain. Uh, now here comes the pilot. The pilot's not wearing a flight suit. They're so good at clenching. They, they take pride in the fact that they don't need to wear a pressure suit, that they just they can tighten the muscles and keep the blood in their head and they don't pass out. You really don't want the pilot to pass out during flight. Patrick does look good in the back seat there. He's got a nice view. These are F-16s, I'm sorry. And uh, Patrick's going to... There it is. Nice picture, right? Okay, let's watch. Let's, let's watch Patrick Norton take some Gs. See if he practiced his clenching. Ready, hit it. <laughs> they're flying basically straight up in the air and they're rolling take the stick inputs paint on my speed they're turning they're flying upside down should we go out some fun they tell you don't have breakfast before you do this uh here we go now watch carefully because patrick's gonna actually black out during this <laughs> He's clenching as hard as he can. 
the physical oh my labor that's involved with the flying by just sitting here and watching it. He's, so get in the he's basically like, looks wow. like he's in labor. No, he's breathing across. like that's it's Lamaze. How are we doing? <laughs> a lot of G there, huh? <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, this is why I didn't do it. Yeah, I was going to say, you know what? This is the first wise decision you've made. <laughs> yeah. They it's keep like, asking me, though. There he goes. There he, and he's out. <laughs> they, keep, they keep asking me, but I just, you know, I, I, it, it, it's, it's cool. I'm really glad that Patrick did it. That's all I can say. Yeah. Isn't that cool? No, that is amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, but is, they didn't ask yeah. you when they came. Maybe that's why they wanted you to go off the river so you could get in one of the Blue Angels and go. Yeah, forward. that was probably it. I wonder. <laughs> they maybe they, maybe they don't even do that anymore now in this in this. Uh, As a person who's slightly cl- uh, claustrophobic, this would be the ideal oh, yeah. situation no, for me. No. I, I, you can see why I didn't do that. Oh yeah. <sighs> <sighs> All right. This is a gadget show. That's the heck yes. of a gadget. That F sixteen, though. I gotta say, that is good. That, that is, is good. a very nice gadget. But uh, I don't think we'll be buying one anytime soon. So maybe you should give us something a little more affordable. Okay, yeah, we're going to do, well, we're going to go for that through, like, perhaps one of the lowest tech gadgets I ever saw. You know, you are, you're showing people your Thin Mints and your uh, chocolate. Yeah, what do you and, got there? It looks like a, uh, that looks like a home canning jar. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. looks like a uh, one jelly? of those. Uh, the ball, yeah, jelly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or... It's a ball jar. Preserved. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you basically, dip- this is a safe. So, <gasps> Oh, look it at is, that. It, that fooled me. It looked totally like homemade preserves in <laughs> you there. Know, you know, it's very funny because uh, First Delirid has come out with this whole line called Hidden in Plain Sight. And they have uh, a quickie brand bathroom cleaner, spray can. That's a safe. And they have a neat thing. They have a whiteboard that you you, you put the, this on a shelf in the kitchen and has magnets to put recipes on. And it's a whiteboard. comes with the pen. You can write family notes. But the whole whiteboard lifts off and there's a safe behind it. So it's if you have really, you know, you want to put your will and your stocks and bonds and some cash in there. It's another way to hide something in plain sight. But when I did this spot, I taped it last Sunday for ABC. It was just amazing the number of people comes into the studio and go, hey, where's that jar everybody's talking about that they said it looks just like it's <laughs> preserves gone well, bad? See, that's, not good. that's not good. You don't want too many people to know about this. No, no you're absolutely right. You're yeah. absolutely right. And the other guy said, I bought beer cans that have fake bottoms. And after I bought them, I thought, you know what? Thug's going to come in, steal stuff, and go, hey, I'm going to take a couple of cans of beer with me, too, for the road. So (laughs) your stuff stuff will disappear. Yeah. I don't know what I got here. It looks like jelly. Let's see. Yeah. 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 That that you don't want to go, oh, this looks like it's homemade. And it. I have to say, though, that looks like a mason jar. And you know what I would do is I'd handwrite a label. That well, that's says, a very good idea. Says something. Make it disgusting. Very, you know, grandma's, yeah. you know, grandma's uh, horse hoof jelly or something. Something gross. Although, you know, your grandma's horse hoof jelly, you know, you didn't like it. I thought that was really, it was pretty. I pretty, think one thing you can say, spicy. it's good for the nails. Okay. It really is yeah. good. If you have weak fingernails, yeah. it'll really help. Yeah. yeah. But um, it brought me good luck, too. The I horse hoof was, jelly? I think I, I think it's the horseshoes that she uses in it. <laughs> with metal bits. I like that. So that's from First Alert. First Alert. It's called Hidden in Plain Sight. Uh, not coming till August. I have pictures of them uh, on my website. Um, so there's going to be the bathroom cleaner safe, the uh, ball jar jelly safe, and the whiteboard hidden in plain sight safe. One of these looks like a Pringles container. Yeah, that that one is the. Uh, uh, it's actually that's the bathroom close, cleaner. Yeah, the yeah. bathroom cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. These would fool exactly. me. <laughs> yeah, of course, me, knowing me, I'd be standing there with the bathroom cleaner trying to spray it, and nothing coming out, and I'd throw it out. So oh, it's empty. Oh, that would be good. That would be very it's empty. Good. Eh, I don't need that nice. anymore. Nice. You know, you know those that jar of preserves that has been <laughs> oh, in there. I threw, t- I threw that out too. Toe jam jelly. I don't want any of that. Let's throw that uh, out. Boy, it's time to clean uh, house. Ah, uh. <laughs> so and by the way, who keeps cash 
like big wads of cash at home. Do people do that? Well, don't you keep a certain amount of cash at home, a couple hundred bucks in case there's an emergency? You don't? No, do you? Of course you yeah. do. Yeah. Of course you do. Why am I asking Dick? Dick <laughs> Dick has like backpacks full of uh, dried food. He's prepared. Yeah, exactly. I am prepared. So I am prepared. So chat room, you do this, you all keep a hundred, couple hundred bucks lying around just in case. Yes, a couple hundred. There you go. I figure there if there's a go. natural disaster, your money's no good here. Better keep gold coins. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have gold coins? Because I no. don't. I, <laughs> see, I see. I'm stunned. I did. My father never told me to do this. So you're saying it's good practice to have a few hundred bucks just somewhere in your house in case. Yeah. If there's an emergency and you have to get out of town, you want to jump in someone's car. You say, listen, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Take me out of town. This comes from the pre-ATM era, right? You can also go to the bank and the ATM's open 24 the hours. The computer's going to be down, pal. <laughs> Once those aliens come down, that's the first thing they're going to do is cut the power. Wow. How much would you say? How much would be 200 bucks? Isn't gonna, that, that's not even a cab ride to no, San Francisco. I would, say, I, need, I would say you should have 500 to to $1,000 cash. I better get one of these Hidden. jelly jars. Hidden. Jeez, no wonder you got all this stuff. <laughs> Holy cow. You keep that money lying around, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I have a whole wow. line of jelly jars. All... <laughs> All right. It, no, I'm screwed if there's an emergency. Somebody sent me an yeah, earthquake you light. Yeah, nothing. So if there's an emergency, my earthquake light will go on. Yeah, that's like right. Like I didn't know. I... Oh, must be an earthquake. My earthquake light went on. Well, well, well. Wait a minute. That that's so that if your house starts falling down, you should put it near an exit. So sure. You, the you only thing where... that will survive is the earthquake light. <laughs> Yeah, my house oh, is know, falling down, but that earthquake, earthquake light yeah, lasts forever. Yeah. I am I am no longer recommending the earthquake light. Why is that? I don't know if it's because we did it or they started making them and, and thought people are scared enough. When I talked about it, it was $49 on Amazon yeah. and $39 at the company's website. Fair price, yeah. yeah. Okay. I was getting ready to gathering stuff for ABC News and usually before I, I do a spot, like if it's a week or two later, I recheck everything. I go to the company's website. The list price is now one hundred dollars ninety nine ninety nine, and their discount price is sixty nine ninety nine. Oh no, no! So it jumped. It jumped thirty bucks. Yeah, they're they're, so they're it, earthquake gouging. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. don't do that. Exactly. The nice thing about ten thousand dollars in a jelly jar, it never costs more than ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, ten thousand I think is a little excessive. Is the is the ten thousand too much? Oh, no, no. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sell my earthquake light because that's good cash. That's good hard. You know, it's cash. soon. That'll be yeah. Sure. You save it another two weeks. It'll be worth uh, <laughs> three hundred. Problem is, if there's an earthquake, is anybody going to want to buy another earthquake light? Yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. Just keep your thirty day lantern and <laughs> I'm set. And when you start shaking around, turn it on. <laughs> It'll be cheaper. Uh, question number two. I mean, gadget number two. Number two. Yes. Okay, you're going to go to um, YouTube video. It's ah, the video. I always enjoy YouTube videos. The second. I'll, I'll give you a little background. The, the guy in the video, his name is Richard Eldon, uh, E-L-D-E-N, and his company is called D Best Products. D, like just the letter D. Uh, BEST products. Now, Richard's at the hardware show every year, and every year, whatever he has is the latest and greatest thing ever. And he really, he's a lot of fun. Is he, he like a hired, you know, gun for? Uh, you know what? His business companies. card, his business card doesn't say anything on it other than his name and the name of the company. I thought he owned the company, but the fun thing about Richard, he's very energetic about it. And whether or not you hold the microphone up to him or take the microphone away, he just goes. <laughs> All right, okay. well, that's and, good, and warning. So, good so this, warning. Right. So this is it. There this we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is his newest product, Smart Court. Okay. It's a very short video. Uh, there we go. Hey, Dick Dick Martola, Mads Madness, trying to end the Gizwiz. We're still at the National Hardware Show. I have so much stuff to carry, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But you know what? 
I'm wearing a shopping cart. Yeah, I, need I am this. wearing this a shopping cart. I'm here this. at DB Products. Uh, Make the best products. Uh, he's, best. A, he's a real salesman, so this is going to be a very painful spot. But we'll we'll try and rein him in. <laughs> so, Richard, this is called Smart Cart. Now, t t take it off my shoulder and show people what you can do. This is the biggest Smart Cart. It's another size, actually. And what you do is nothing weighs so little, holds so much, and folds thinner. Folds to only two inches. This one holds 125 pounds. And take a look. Let me show you. I might get this because I have to walk to the grocery store. You know, this would be very... Holding it. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. And, and it rolls? And this one yeah. Has a and? And? Ergonomic can I drive handle. it around? You load a little bit more in it. So what you do is you got the double handle here. Here's a regular smart card. We just have the smaller handle because you don't load that much in it. Although... This can hold 110 pounds. This is sufficient to load in and out of the car, now, up and down the stairs. Does this one have a, a telescoping handle also? Yes, they do. As a matter of fact, all smart carts come with an ergonomic curvature in the handle. What that does <laughs> is it allows you to pull more weight with less effort, and it reduces the strain on your lower back and your shoulders. Part of the patented design, we actually have multiple patents, both here in the U.S. and in other countries, and it's actually become the best-selling product in the history of our company in only six months on the market, we've been making, patenting, designing, and selling products like this for 10 years. Wait a minute. This is the 10th time I've come by this booth, and every year it's the largest selling, the best <laughs> ah, thing no, the company's ever come up with. Well, you know what? That's because we get better and better products, and they're selling at high and higher volume. Uh, we're very, very fortunate. Okay. Especially in He's a good. Like now, something right. like He's this good. must cost hundreds of dollars. Wow. I'm setting him up. <laughs> something like this must cost hundreds of dollars. This one, the regular smart car sells between $25 to $30. Oh, that's a good deal. The bigger smart car sells $35 to $40. That's great. And you can see I'm lifting them both up with my pinkies, and I'm not even trying. Okay, now I'm going to get in one of them, <laughs> and, and then you're going to lift it up. So now where are people finding these to buy? You can always buy them from our company website at The Best Products. You go to Google, type in The Best Products, or go to www.thebestproducts.net, and you, sp you spell it like this. D -B -E -S -T. It's D B E S T. So a little bit of, a bit of a unique spelling. Okay. And three Products colors. Net. Three colors. We have net. red, navy blue, and black in both sizes. Okay, and they're available now, and you're shipping now. And Absolutely. we also oh. have now uh, cooler bags. Uh, that is an accessory. Right? Wait a minute. You know, I only have a nine-hour show. <laughs> okay. You know, we're developing the line more and more because it's been <laughs> You don't even give him the mic. So, you just let him go. He just keeps talking. Okay. Yeah. This is really good, actually. Very clever. It's very light. Uh, I do want one of these. Smart Cart, and you can get it online. And the price is really reasonable. So, Dixie Bartolo, Mads Mad is trying to end the Gizwiz with this week's weekly daily Gizwiz video, again from the 2012 National Hardware Show. I'm going to walk around and find more stuff. That's great. Dick, I love that. Yeah, no, they, I yeah love the carts that. are good, aren't they? Yeah. Especially that when, if you're going to a place to pick stuff up, you can wear it as a shoulder bag or, or a backpack, and that, I like that a lot. Well, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, the apartment I live in, the, the, there was no parking. You have to park across the street in the parking garage. So going shopping, but I can walk to the grocery store. It's just a few blocks. So I wanted to get one of those little, you know, carts like the little old ladies. I think it'd just be perfect for me to yeah, no, this, yeah. trail, trail behind me. But this would be better because I can wear it as a backpack and then go, go into the store, do my shopping. And then they, and by the way, California is about to outlaw plastic bags. I mean, we... We kind of need to really? do something, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, this this could be a solution. D-B-E-S-T dot net, is that right? Yes, it is. Well, it's not pulling anything up at all. What? Maybe they're on the on the lamb. No, no. D-Best. Oh, I'm sorry. D-Best. D-B-E-S-T products yeah. dot net. Oh, products. You left out the products. Right. That's important. D-Best oh, okay. <laughs> products. There it is. There it is. I got. I got it now. Okay. Featuring the smart cart. Right now, yeah. on the website, they are a little higher in price than he said. The, the little one is really reasonable. I think it's twenty nine dollars, and for some reason, the big one is forty nine dollars, and it just holds a little bit more. So, if you're on a budget, the the uh, regular smart cart would be good. And how well made? Did you get a sense that they were well you made? You know what? I I I, I'm, I I said to the guy. 
you know, I never got to touch one in person. How well are they made? He said, right. we'll just send you one and you can play with it. So if you want to wait a week, I can tell you next week. Yeah, tell me how next well. week how, how good those yeah, are. Yeah, okay, good. And I'm just going to check and see if uh, D-B-E-S-T, if they sell it on Amazon, because you know me. They do yes, sell no, some absolutely. of their other stuff. Leo, but I am loving Amazon. Thursday, we're doing a little project here, and I had my Makita drill. And They do sell Dennis it on Amazon. It's cheap on Amazon. Oh, how much? Yeah, uh, twenty six thirty one for the normal size. Right. Good. Okay. So that's that that's a lot. That's a lot less, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, it's only like three or four bucks, but it's free shipping. Right. Because if you got Amazon, because you're Prime, a Prime, Prime, Prime yeah. member, and they have no. I, I yeah. needed uh, uh, saw blades for my Makita jigsaw, and I ordered them Thursday. Uh, Amazon Prime, and this morning about 11 a.m., I, I get a text message, your package will arrive soon. I know, I love that. F 15 minutes later, yeah. the mailman rings the bell. Isn't that amazing? And, uh, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, these are, they, they have a lot of, uh, they have a rolling cartridge, carts, all sorts oh, of they, stuff. Oh, you know, they have the original, I think, <clears throat> like a milk crate that falls up out of plastic. But I like this a lot better because, um, you know, it's soft to the touch. And I, I think it was... So are, so are you, Dick. And, so that's, and that's why I like you. <laughs> so that's true. That's yeah. true. And you can fold me up and throw you on your back, too. And God knows you've done that enough. <laughs> well, I just ordered one, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you the feedback. I'm going to get mine before you get yours, probably. I'm probably I, yeah. correct. I'm getting this yeah. on Monday. It should be here by the end of the show because you had that <laughs> super prime. I have the super prime. Yeah, somebody comes to your door and delivers it for you. Yes, they're right. Someone's standing outside the studio and, and they actually tap into your Wi-Fi and they go, he's ordering something, he's ordering something. <laughs> Quick, do we have it in the in the car? Yes, give it to him. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. They just call you ahead of time and say, what are the three products you'll be talking about in the uh, Leo will be ordering shortly. I seem to buy everything you talk about, Dick. You're a very good Pretty salesman. Much. You, Pretty yeah. much. Well, I'm You're not a very good this. salesman. I just tend I tend to talk about things that I really like. That's maybe so. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number three. Number three. You probably don't need this, but I just thought it was a very interesting concept, which is why I'm talking about the Pro Sensor Stud Finder. Oh man. Now, this is really neat. Now, over the years, there's been dozens of stud finders at the hardware show. This is from Franklin Sensors. So they're at franklinsensors.com. And the thing with, this, with uh, most stud finders, you put them on the wall, you hold the on button, takes a few seconds, then a green light comes on to tell you it's calibrated. You slide it across, and when a light lights, that marks one end of the beam or the stud, then you move it to the other side of where you think the stud is and you move it on back until the light comes on and then you draw a line. And between those two lines is the width of the stud. So this thing has a line of LEDs across the entire stud finder. So as you move it across the wall, a, a bunch of LEDs will light up. And you, you can tell by the number of LEDs how wide the stud is that you are on top of. It's kind of, it's almost so, like seeing through the wall because the LEDs follow the stud as you move the stud. That's exactly sensor, right. right. Yeah. And, and if the studs are very close together, it can actually light up two different sets of LEDs to show you there's oh, a stud wow. here, a stud here, and the LEDs that aren't lit is the amount of space between these two studs. Some people do need need dual studs. <laughs> or they exactly. have they have dual studs, and then they yeah, want to be they, able to they, make sure they yeah, know especially that. Especially on a holiday weekend, <laughs> I would say that they were in great they're in great demand. You have an extra day. Is this off. the Pro Sensor Seven Ten we're looking at? That is the one. Yeah. That is the one. Um, it's it a professional just, stud sensor. That's yeah. That's why it's forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, you know, if you have to, I guess if you only had to find studs once in a while, yeah, it, absolutely. It's a lot to I spend. I like it because as soon as I walked into the display, it, it turned lit up. <laughs> um, um, you know, because you know, see, I have a, I'm in a, I think I'm in a steel frame building. I don't think I have wooden studs. So even if I found it, it wouldn't do me much good. You know, because uh, uh, I can't you know hammer I into it. Like that. They have steel studs. I don't know. In your wall, you know, you know who built the building that I live in? Lisa. 
Lisa she, built the building. Well, she not by head. hand, but she oh, was. Oh, she no, was. The, no, she I'm was, not impressed. I was. I was wildly impressed. A few minutes. <laughs> she was the comptroller of the company. She she did the finances for uh, for the building I'm in. Oh, so, Leo, let me you, wanna, you talk about Leo. You and, talk about hidden cash. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and the walls are lined the with them. I think those are gold you, studs, you, not steel. Yeah. I and bet then, every and then uh, and then Liz Romero uh, was the rental agent until we hired her away from there. So I have an in there. Wow. I have an in there. So she'll know. She'll know what's what's it. But I think it's steel. So you can, if I have steel studs, I could I get a special kind of screw. Okay, and I can I can go right into the stud. If you have the right kind of, uh, there's a joke there that I just don't want. Yeah, I yeah, don't want to go anywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of this. Yeah, don't want to go anywhere near. It's just uh, three thousand yeah, miles. I'm yeah, safely yeah, three thousand yeah. miles You're away. You're smart. You're very smart. <laughs> we'll just leave it right there. And uh, um, <sighs> all right, so that's that is available now, and they're at FranklinCensus.com. I believe it is also available on Amazon, and it is called the Pro Sensor Seven Ten. Now, I have a turn-the-table turkey that I think you're going to like. I'm very okay. excited about this. But before we do that, I would like to mention our friends, if you don't mind, at Netflix.com. Oh, what are you kidding? I love you Netflix. Live, I know you live on Netflix. What is, what is the last movie you saw? Uh, you know what? I was, for some reason, looking for Three Stooges stuff. A, a, TV, a made-for-TV movie came up. About the Three Stooges. You know, I'm going to watch this because I'll tell you why. I was very disappointed with that Three Stooges film that they did. They opened and closed for in five minutes. I, I was going to say uh, that's what I was looking for information on that. I wanted a bio. Seems, I wanted a biopic. Right. This is a bit of a. a actually, it's it's very good. Uh, it's only like an hour and a half, and I think it was made for HBO. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think it was a theatrical release. But I watched the whole thing, and, and uh, I called Dennis down because he's a Stooges fan, too. Well, who isn't? And, uh, so there's quite a bit of uh, – there's old three – there's original Three Stooges stuff from the, from the 30s going back to the 40s. There's Three Stooges Curly Classics. Uh, oh. There's Three Stooges Merry Mavericks Hapless Halfwits. It sounds like our show. The Three Stooges <laughs> – Festival, yeah. yeah. Right. There's in fact yeah. two thousand three hundred eighty-two Three Stooges titles on on, on uh, Netflix. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty. That is amazing. even more shows than the Two Stooges. Have done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so here's the deal with Netflix. Now I know I think a lot of these actually are DVDs. And here's the problem: you get a you get an urge for the Three Stooges. Are you going to want to wait till the DVD comes in the mail? No. You really you want to scratch that itch right away. And that's why I love streaming. If you go to the Netflix Watch Instantly area. Now, this you can watch on your computer, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android phone, your PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, your Nintendo Wii, pretty much anything. If it's connected to the Internet, you can stream great TV and movies right away as you, you, know, as you have the urge and I re that's what I really like. In fact, Netflix noticed this. They changed their recommendation system. They said it's very different if somebody's going to order a DVD or watch it instantly. There's a huge difference. And one of the things that they realized is if there's the, the lower barrier to entry of streaming means people will watch a lot of crap that they wouldn't watch otherwise. and Or not necessarily crap, but just like Three Stooges, like stuff that you, I'm not going to get a DVD to watch the Three Stooges, but if I can watch it right now, it's kind of, yeah, I actually might watch it right now. Um, great TV shows, Breaking Bad, Arrested Development. By the way, Netflix uh, is going to be bringing Arrested Development back and producing it under their own label. They're doing a lot of that. Serenity, Chinatown, Amadeus, The Big Lebowski, The Graduate. These are just movies I've recently watched. Being John Malkovich, OSS 117, Spinal Tap, Train Spotting. Exit Through the Gift Shop, great documentary about Banksy, Ghostbusters, Clockwork Orange, Memento, Heathers. These, I mean, these are the movies I've watched recently. Swingers, The Producers, Mel Brooks, and Gene Wilder. Oh, let's just watch that. Forget the show. <laughs> yeah, right. we're just going to watch The Producers. Forget, the sh forget I even talked about it. Well, the show is over. Goodbye. Netflix.com slash twit. Try it free for 30 days. Now, I know you all know about this. So may I make a suggestion? Tell your friends. Tell your family. Netflix.com slash twit. 30 days free. 
right now. Seven dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh, this is the greatest movie ever. <laughs> we take you now to the offices of Max Bialystok, theatrical producer, played by Zero Mostel in a red velvet smoking jacket. And there she is, a little old lady, his investor, and they're just having a fabulous love play. Can't produce plays without checkies. You can count on me, you dirty young man. <laughs> oh! Oh! This was one of the greatest comedies of all time. Zero Mustel, Gene Wilder. That's all I need to say. Bialystok and Bloom. Bialystok and Bloom. And you see how I can zip through this and pick? Like, so, let, no, so this is, again, this is stream. If I want to watch a frame, I, like, I want to watch uh, the great Kenneth Mars uh, talking to him about his play Springtime for Hitler. Here they are. <laughs> oh. And he gets his pen out, the contract out, and they get Kenneth. Dear Franz Liebkin, sign here and make your dream a reality. Here it is, springtime for Hitler, signed, sealed, and delivered. Oh, my gosh, this is such a great movie. And, of course, they choose for their Hitler. Oh, you got to see this guy. The strangest hippie dude. He's wearing a Campbell's soup can around. Who's this actor? Come on, you know, Dick. Oh, I do. It is. Oh, come on, chat room help. Uh, Dick Sean, thank you. Yeah, the great Dick Sean. Is this not one of the great movies of all time? All right, that, oh, enough fair. of that. I we could end up spending the whole time watching this show. I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to stop watching in a minute. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> That's the power of love. So Netflix.com/slash/twit. Thank you, Netflix, for your support. And you just got a long damn ad. It's time for uh, me to do my thing, and I'm going to stop uh, the movie so that I can do it. But, Dick, it does require of you a little yes. dramatic entrance, if you don't mind. Yes. Dick D. Bartolo, yes, one time during this podcast, this netcast, this whatever you want to call it, Leo <laughs> gets to pick a gadget of his own. I know we've laughed at the toothpick bird, feared the two by four. Let's see what it is today on his TTTT -t -t -t, turn the table turkey. Chocolate mints. It's oh. turkey time. Actually, this is something that uh, uh, no, we, we've we've sort of altered it that it could be a turkey or it could be a treasure. This I'm thinking is a treasure. It's certainly something Logitech sent us for review for the Before You Buy show, and I like it so much. I'm trying to keep it. Unfortunately, it's okay. got it's it's got somebody's name written. Oh, that's you, Bob. Uh, so I guess I won't be keeping the iPad. If you're smart, he he uh, he got the iPad, but I maybe I'll get to keep the thing I've got on top of it. So let me show you real quickly because what this looks like perhaps is an iPad. Uh, this is the uh, the most recent, right? But I think this would work with an iPad uh, one, or rather an iPad two, not the iPad one. But uh, and then it looks like I've got a, a matching uh, aluminum cover, right? So it looks like yeah. it's got a nice cover, and I could open it up, and then there would be the iPad and the cover. And everything. but look at this; it's not just a cover. It is a keyboard. Yes, it's got the smart cover magnetic latch, so it goes right on it. Wow. But also, it's got a groove, a white groove in the center that the magnets also sit in. So it's a very nice oh, this is stand, neat. right? It's at a good angle for viewing if you're sitting up in the uh, landscape mode. Uh, you could, you know, I mean, it's enough of a groove that you could put it in also in the perpendicular mode. But it's not, it doesn't feel quite as sturdy as it does when it uses the magnets in the landscape mode. So let's put it back in there. And then you're going to love this. This keyboard here, this is a Logitech Bluetooth keyboard that works with the Bluetooth. You have to pair it to the, uh, um, let, me, let me start a new note and we can, I can show you what it can do. You pair it to the iPad and now 
yeah, and you've seen these before. We've seen a great many of them. In fact, Logitech sells uh, one from Zag. This is a nice keyboard, very easy to type on. That works perfectly well with the iPad. I can type onto it. So it is. It is a. It is easily the smallest. In fact, that's why Logitech calls it the ultra thin keyboard for the iPad. Smallest iPad uh, keyboard, Bluetooth keyboard, and. You don't have to really carry a separate device because it is a case as well. So it is, it, it, and, it, and a fairly thin case. This doesn't add a huge amount. In fact, you could compare it to the smart cover. It's only slightly thicker and slightly heavier than the smart cover. Has an on off switch to save you battery life, USB uh, charging to charge the battery up. You get about 12 hours of battery life uh, on this. Um, I have to say, I think Logitech did this right $99. It's the Logitech Ultra Thin. Now, they have others. Uh, keyboard case so you want to make sure you get the right one it's the one that looks like it's a, a case for it it's not um they have they have bigger thicker ones this is the one this is the ultra thin and that's the one you want very i have to say i really like yeah it. that yeah. makes a really nice isn't that nice yeah yeah it's like you carrying one of those ultra books with you yeah 99 bucks yeah, well, this is smaller than an Ultrabook, of course. Ninety-nine bucks. Mm -hmm. It's called the Ultra Thin Keyboard <clears throat> Cover. Actually, that's the that's what you're looking for—the cover thing, because that's exactly what it is. It's a cover. It uses the smart uh, magnets in the uh, iPad uh, two and three uh, to to uh, attach it. Now they say six month battery life on a full charge, so uh, twelve hours if you're using it constantly. You know, but six months on a full charge is a long time, and it's USB charging, so it makes it very easy to charge it up. If you charge it up, that's based on average use of twelve, uh, two hours per day for six months. So actually, it's, gonna, it's many more hours than I was quoting. I'm sorry, I, w I was wrong. It's not twelve hours. It is two times thirty times six, so it's like four hundred eighty hours of uh, wow. battery life. You know, the regular cover is like sixty bucks, isn't it? Uh, the smart nothing? cover is forty or fifty, I think, but oh, uh, so, okay. but it, it doesn't do very much. This is actually <laughs> it gonna, covers. Gonna, covers. It's going to do a lot more. By the way, uh, just kind of a couple of little things. For instance, uh, when you have to unlock it, you don't have to tap the keypad in front. You can actually unlock it from the keyboard itself. That's pretty. Oh. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, it's very quiet, so this would be great for a student. It doesn't clunk along. Um, uh, I just and I and, and I like it. And you can, by the way, get it engraved on the other side uh, as well. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the, the, there's a button here that will, uh, if you tap it, will uh, zoom around in the um, in the screen. So if you have an app open, for instance, and you and you tap this little screen button on it. It will go back to the home screen. You tap it again, it'll go to the search screen. And, of course, you can type, start typing a search right away, which makes it really easy uh, to use to quickly navigate around. In fact, in a way, this is, this is almost touchless navigation uh, with it. Um, so uh, really, really impressive. Instant on and off. Uh, because it, it's using the smart cover and the smart magnets to turn it on and off. You do have to have an iPad 2 or an iPad 3 to use this. It's too thick to use with the iPad uh, 1. It does require the smart cover uh, capability. Uh, so a 2 or 3. Six months between charges yeah, with, with an average nice. use of two hours a day. I have to say, I, I'm really... I, I This is the first one. I've seen a lot of them. Uh, this is the first one that I really want to buy. Um, no, it is. Somebody's asking, is it backlit? It is not backlit. Um, so, and that's probably to save battery life. It would be that would be nice. You have enough light, probably, even in the dark. Uh, you have enough light coming off the iPad, probably, so you can uh, see the keys uh, pretty well. It has some uh, special features on the top. The keys here, the function keys, they've got cut, copy, uh, paste. So uh, that's kind of handy too. Uh, something you can't really do normally. You have to hold it and do all this complicated stuff. They have volume controls right here. Um, let's press some of these buttons and see what else it'll do. This is kind of fun, exploring around. Um, oh, the other thing I like about it is once you once you use this case, um, the, you no longer have the keyboard sliding up on the iPad. The iPad's smart about Bluetooth keyboards. It will default to the case. So you don't have to ever oh, worry about clever. screen resolution taken up uh, on, on the uh, iPad screen. So this is pretty sweet. Uh, $99. 
uh, which I think is exactly the right price. It is both a case and a keyboard and a stand and uh, does a very nice job. That's the Logitech Ultra Thin Keyboard Cover, and it has not shipped yet. It's supposed to ship sometime in June. So uh, you can pre-order it now on the Logitech site or at Amazon.com. Um, I'm I'm super impressed. I am super impressed by this. This is they do have. If you want a backlit keyboard, they do sell one that's uh, uh, a Bluetooth keyboard that you can use. I think with backlighting, but I wouldn't recommend it because you're just going to use up too much light. Just just get over it. Okay, <laughs> just. Just get over it and just, you know. Just, just don't go into those dark places. Yeah, don't stop going into dark places, okay? Stop doing it. Um, this is this is the one I bet you see everywhere. Uh, really super cool. And I and uh, I would say if, you know, if you make sure you plug this in and charge it uh, every time you charge your iPad, you're never going to have to worry about that. Uh, wait a minute. No, it looks like it might be in stock now. Oh, well, this is some good news. This uh, they they have apparently started shipping. I just went to the Amazon page, and uh, now it's ninety eight ninety five on Amazon, Amazon Prime, now in stock. The ultra. Whoa. Yes, I have a feeling we just sold about three, and they're all to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. Do you have an iPad? I don't think you do. Uh, I do not. Yeah. I do not. But I'm still going to buy that case because... Uh, well, you don't need an iPad. The case is so good, you don't need it. No, I'll just use it. I'll, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll uh, put a picture of an iPad in it. Yeah. I, I can't stand for that, you to have That's probably all you need. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Eight millimeters yeah. thick. How about that? Huh? Wow. Huh? huh? Wow. Now, how much would you pay? <laughs> all right, Dickie D. Uh, that means uh, I'm completed my portion of the show. That means it's time yep. for us... To take a little stroll. I know many of you are, are avid hikers and walkers, and it's time for us to wander Manhattan. Sometimes yep. we do this for hours, sometimes days. Bring a sandwich because you never know when you'll find Dick's Gadget Warehouse. You might take one of those backpack shopping bags, too. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, oh, oh. he takes them out to play. Mm -hmm. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the little old gadget master, Dick DiBartolo. Yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. I have a name. And you may know the name only because you may have read it this past week because this gentleman passed on, Eugene Pauly. P O L L E Y. I don't know Eugene Pauling. Oh, now. okay, okay. He invented something very clever. He invented. See if see if you can guess what it was. The device he invented. This was 1955, and he invented Flashmatic. 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 Okay. Well, I'll give it away by saying who he worked for. He worked for Kodak Zenith. Zenith. Yes. The quality goes in, and then we take it out, and we ship it to you. Yeah, that's right. The it's a yeah, remote the, the control name. is what the uh, the the uh, the studio audience. That is that has, is correct. Says it was, it's the it remote the, control. The first remote control, and really? it was visual light. So in the corners of the screen, there were little photo cells that would react to. The <clears throat> I remember it looked like a little pistol actually, and you aimed it at the screen, and you could turn the set on and off, and change channels. That was pretty much it. Did it click? It was pretty, Did it go <clears throat> tonk? Uh, the uh, you know the tune is back then. Remember well, that you, know they, what, you I, had to press them, and there was almost a, like a hydraulic. You thing know what that would I, happen? I I don't remember, but the one before this, I don't know if you remember this. There used to be a chain of stores called the 5 and 10. Yeah. They sold this device. I wish I had this in the warehouse. It actually clamped onto that big tuna control. Then there was a big, thick wire that ran across your living room rug. And then you would activate this thing. And this a little physical knob would go clunk, chunk. Yes, the exactly. chunk. And it could only go in one direction. So if you were going from four to channel two, you had to go through all the other chunk, channels. Chunk, to, chunk. Yeah, yeah. Until it came back around. Wow. Now, let me ask you uh, do you have <clears throat> yeah. one of these? 
No, I do not. So what I tried to do was find some remote control thing. This thing looks to, like a, uh, I'm just looking at it. It looks like a radar gun for, the, you know, a, a cop. I mean, it's, or a blow dryer. I mean, this does not, this looks funny. It's not what you would yeah. get, you know? Yeah, well, you know, trigger because, on it. yeah, exactly. You know, I actually, I was thinking of a different one. I didn't find that particular photo. This, that, this that is, is a history of TV remote controls at electronichouse.com. And this is the first one, as you say, the Zenith Flashmatic. Boy, that's, a, and then maybe you remember this, the Space Commander 600. The Space Commander you was remember that? Yeah. several gen generations after yeah, that. That was, yes, that was the one I was thinking yeah. of that we, we thought was the clicker because it, it would go boom, boom. <laughs> when you, yeah. And yeah, and, and you could and only go just, higher or lower on the channel. You couldn't. Yes, just five buttons on, on, yeah, on those yeah. early things. Chunk. So what I do have in the warehouse is remote buddy. So I try to, this is kind of actually a nice blending of things. It, it mentions Eugene who passed away. It's a throwback to the hardware show that we've done a bunch of shows on. And it's a device that I think may have already come to the end of its life in just three years. Wow. Uh, remote buddy is a place where you would slide four remote controls. Oh, it's a, each, like a caddy, a remote control caddy. Caddy, except each uh, slot came with its own color transmitter that you glued onto the back of each remote control. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. So then you go, oh, the orange remote control is missing. So you push the orange button oh, on remote dear. buddy. Oh, dear. And it would... Activate By the way, this the, is the first remote control with a cup holder. Yes. Oh, Leo, that is that is what's so funny. So, <laughs> Has a so cup what, holder. What happened was the remote controls are really too big for the size of the pockets. So every time you put a remote in there, it would fall over and knock all the others <laughs> out. And everything would fall right. So I finally gave up on remote buddy, but... I kept the cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, it's the other way it's around. It's an excellent <laughs> cup holder. <laughs> yes. When, when I first got it, I said, I, I'm not going to. I'll put the cup holder in the warehouse. I'll never need it. Oh, so then, my God. When Dennis started bringing drinks in, I thought, wait a minute. I'm going to put remote buddy in the warehouse and bring the cup holder back home because I'm using that. Um, That's very funny. The, the, <laughs> the name of the company is Stuck on Tools. And the website is still up, but uh, I wonder what's going on there because if you click new gadgets, remote buddy shows up. If you click on buy it, it says, sorry, shopping cart unavailable. Oh. And it's been that way for about 10 days now. Oh, so bad. maybe they're rethinking it or, or I know they were not at the hardware show this year. Uh, but if you're, if you're saying, Dick, this is the best thing I ever heard of, there are one or two places online still selling Remote Buddy for about 39 bucks. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Remote Buddy Remote from Stuck buddy. On Tools. We've come a long way, baby. <laughs> yes, we yes, have. Yes, we have. Well, uh, let's see. That seems to be the end of the gadget portion. There is remaining only one portion on this show. And as you can see, Dick is preparing. He's collating. He's aggregating. And he's, he's ready to read the letter of the week. Before you read the letter, I just want to send a five-minute warning. We're about ready to conclude the show, I believe. A five-minute warning to anybody who might need to get in costume for our next episode, our next program, this week in Twit, which usually comes after this. If anybody needs to get in costume for this week in Twit, now would be the time. All right, I understand. Okay. Oh, Myra's going at... Did you mean Myra? I meant Myra, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Or anybody watching at home. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. All right. So I have <clears throat> I have a comment posted on my website, and I have a letter. First, a comment, which is very funny. Uh, on my website, uh, site, Arbiter uh, posted this comment. 
on the topic of weird things to put motors on. He was last week we talked about cruising cooler. This is a cooler that you actually put beer in and ice in and then drove. Uh, so un, <laughs> under what a great picture, idea. <laughs> what a great idea. Under the description of cruising cooler. Yeah. Uh, Arbiter wrote, on the top of the weird things to put motors on, there's a company called Hossfly, H-O-S-S, Fly, and they make motorized bar stools. <laughs> now, unlike the coolers, the bar stools are powered by V8 engines. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. They are at Hossfly, Inc., dot com h o s s fly inc dot com so if you would like to get on a bar stool powered yeah. and sit on top of a v8 engine and then just drive off and then just drive off after you've after you've had sufficient alcoholic beverages yeah, just drive exactly. away is that the i mean I thought cruising cooler was bizarre, but uh, this is the, a fairly hefty engine uh, well this is the good yeah, news v8, is it has a steering wheel. Yes, that's well. Well, don't forget the. the uh, here, here, here we and, go. And, and it also sounds like it sounds like a Briggs and Stratton engine on that thing. Oh, listen to him. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is more of a vehicle than a bar stool. I mean, I think the bar stool is just a small portion. Yeah. Yes. The bar. Well, it's basically the smallest thing you can sit on <laughs> if you want to sit on top of a car engine. And by the way, this is not street legal. No. But it's, it might be bar legal. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. I think, and it has four wheels, so you're you're safe <laughs> as long as the bar is pretty big. Now, there's only one bar in the entire country, uh, Billy Bob's in, in Fort Worth, Texas, that this would be of any use in. <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> because that's a bar that's so big that it actually has a rodeo arena in the bar. Oh, okay. Forget okay. the mechanical bull. They've got live bulls in the bar. Wow. Uh, Billy wow. Bob's Texas is an amazing bar, and it is so big that you probably could use this. <laughs> I can't. I don't understand. I just don't understand. What's the point? Uh, I don't know. You're not even carrying beer with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this might have been invented at Billy Bob's, Texas, actually. <laughs> it was certainly invented after a, a certain a few, a few beers. Um, amount of alcohol. You yeah. know what would be great? What? If I could drive this bar stool on out of here. Okay. Well, that's a hundred million dollar idea. I don't care. I'm going to make it. Oh, you mean that they pay me a hundred million? All right. Yeah. I'll no, buy I one. Think so. I don't think so. Mm. We're well, now on to our letter, and actually our letter brings up uh, a question that I wondered about, and since you know all, you might be able to clear this up. It's from our all. friend Ofer. We haven't heard from Benari in San Diego. We've not heard from him in a while. Mm -hmm. And he writes, I had an interesting experience of the bad kind. I needed to back up photos and music on my Samsung Galaxy <laughs> Nexus Android phone. The charger is detachable USB, moved it from a little box, plugged it in the wall, attached it to the USB port on my computer. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Computer didn't recognize the phone. The phone didn't recognize the computer. It did charge. Would a different USB cable work? I dug out another one. No, no charge. Same with two out of three. I emptied out the box, and I finally found the original cable that came with the phone. Looks no different. When I plugged it in the computer, instant connection. Yeah. Files could be downloaded. Yeah. I don't know what they did. There's obviously something different about the cable that comes with the phone. If other manufacturers are doing this, there's no point in universal USB connection since we have dozens of these cables, each serving just one device. Um, I agree. That is illegal, I believe, in Europe now. Um, you oh, know, okay. There was I had this, Leo. I have the Droid 4. Right. I have yeah. a little cable yeah. on top of my nightstand yeah. that plugged all my other phones. One night I plugged this in. In the morning, I didn't even look. I took it up. I got to mad. It was dead. Yeah. So the, yeah. the phone lit, but it didn't charge. Yeah, I think that I think that uh, Ofer's right. There is a USB standard uh, that should be adhered to. 
Uh, but it's possible, of course, to design a phone that looks like it's using a USB cable, but it's using a proprietary cable. There's no law against doing that in the U.S., but in the uh, in the uh, uh -huh. the European uh -huh. Union, um, they because remember we used to have every phone had its own power adapter, right? It was yes, an, it was absolutely. An it was a ridiculous. Yes, yes. So in the European Union, they required that everybody support micro USB. That's why, as you when you get phones nowadays, they all have micro USB yes. ports on them. I don't know how Apple's getting around this. They still use their proprietary, uh, you know, thirty pin connector on here. I think yeah. what they do is in and. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what they do in Europe is they ship a dongle with this that gives it a USB port, but I'm not sure. Um, oh, okay. Or maybe okay. a dock. No, I know. I, I saw an ad for a smartphone charger, uh, a battery that would recharge smartphones, and on the bottom it said, some new smartphones have a chip that oh, requires I hope that's the charger true. be from the company. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, that's bad news, isn't it? So that sounds like it's something new. I know this has been around in the past. I hope this isn't a new trend. That would be yeah, terrible. I hope not, too. Yeah. You have to use the company's USB because that really doesn't, you know, the whole point of this, it's been, we've been kind of, it's been great lately because all the phones yes. use micro USB and all the cables are standard. And you almost certainly have a you know variety of chargers you can use. But that would be disappointing if they go back to that. Do not buy I a phone agree. that does that. Let's Let's say that. How about that? No, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. You go into the store with your with your USB cable and say, "I'll buy this phone if, it, if, if this my cable own works. USB." Let's just plug this in the wall right yeah. now. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Um, so Padre SJ says Motorola doesn't have a chip, but it does check for data when you plug in the charger using a standard USB cable. If it detects a live data pin, in other words, if you're connecting to a computer. It will not charge. You have to connect it to just a plug, no data. Oh, okay. Now, Padre knows a lot. He's, he's going to be the host of a new show on Twit called This Week in Enterprise Tech. He's a, and, uh -huh. and he's a priest, so you can believe him. Oh, this is good. Yes. This is good. Tech confessions. Electronic confession. Oh, I like that idea. This is good. Yes. This is good. Yeah. So, uh, um, so that makes sense. Penance. That makes sense. So, what Motorola is doing is they're checking to see if it's, if you're plugged into a computer, then they go, okay, I won't charge, but I, but now we have a data connection. And if you plug into the wall with an adapter, obviously, you don't, nobody should plug a USB port into your plug socket. That sounds very dangerous. <laughs> with an adapter, then, uh, Friar Tech says that should work. Oh, Friar Tech. Friar Tech. Like, That's what we call it. That, that is yeah, so No, great. I did not. I, the chat room made that up, but I, that I, love, the, so I love the idea. Funny. Yeah, that is so funny. That is so clever. Yes. <laughs> He's got, he, he responds to a higher authority. Yes. So, wow. uh, Dick, we've come to the end of this fabulous show. Yes, yes, yes. Would you like yes. another now for the road? have something else to be thankful for. Here's another. The show. It's over. over. Yeah, give me yeah, another, another mint for the road. road. Go ahead, take one. Thank here. you. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wait a minute. It's a giant hand. I don't like that. looks like you got two there. Um, so, uh, thank you. It was some, Adam Curry. Uh, Adam Curry. Uh, want some jelly? Want some, uh, yeah, I'll take shirt. what's in it. Uh, what flavor is it? <laughs> I, yeah, no, uh, no, 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 no. It's no, cabbage no. flavored jelly. Yeah, no. It's, uh, you know, my, see, Myra is of the same thinking. Myra said, Myra just put $500 in here. Really? <laughs> she just, yeah, she just said, can I take this on the train home? See, because that's I'm so smart. Would you like some of my jelly, <laughs> Junior? It's not jelly, Grandma. That's cold hard cash. <laughs> are you picnicking, or what are you doing for Memorial Day? Um, well, I uh, I'm going to wear a cat suit. And, oh, okay. uh, and, uh, no, I. What am I doing for Memorial Day? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I should picnic, shouldn't I? Yeah, we're going to picnic in the yard. Are you in the you yard? Know, I thought this was. Uh, you know, I, I thought this was funny. I, I picked up some picnic stuff today. The giant Gouldens. Right, I love Goulden's mustard. Yeah, and I see it's the big, bigger than the fifty percent more. Yeah, right. Okay, and I went to put it on some cheese earlier for lunch, yeah. and I looked down, and it says eighteen ounces, fifteen percent more than our twelve ounces. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a right? It's true of everything, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know, but doesn't it make it look it does like, look you're like you get more in there? More yeah. for free? There's yeah. less air little, in the bottle. Yeah. Yeah, the tiny yeah. little print down there. Than if you bought the 12 ounce. 50% more than the 12 ounce variety. 
Yeah, I, I bet their 64 ounce is 50% more than their 32. Yeah, it's 100% more. It's, 100% more. Uh, it's a more. good deal. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a better deal. That's a, <laughs> twice as much mustard as in the half size yeah. container. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I'm going to just picnic in the yard, I think. That All right. Good. All right. Well, enjoy your lovely Memorial Day weekend. And You uh, too, sir. Thank you for being here. We will see you next time on the weekly be daily here. Gizwiz. <laughs> timing. It's all That's about timing. Way. Yeah. It's all about yeah. I hate it when we step on each other. Thank you, Dickie I D. I kind of like it. Okay. <laughs> step on me. All right. All right. All right.